Hi, Captain Mike here with you again uh, on a video that I'm going to try and make as brief as possible. Um, probably not going to happen. There's a lot to cover here. But in this video, we are going to do some advanced techniques uh, with um, the natural clay slip that I have featured in Messing with Mud 1 and 2. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, uh, I'll put uh, it on the screen here and you can go advise that you watch those first before you watch this one. Uh, but uh, these are just things that I've learned, things that I can pass on to you and uh, hopefully make life just a little bit easier. Um, if it appears from time to time that I'm reading off a script, it is, because I've got lots of notes over here, because there's a lot of stuff to cover, and I'm trying to do it in a certain way. So let's get at it, okay? Uh, the first part uh, of this video is going to be about the clay. Like I said, if you haven't seen the first two videos, go to uh, those videos, part one and part two. Watch them, uh, and they'll tell you what you need to do. But in brief, you're going to get a, a clump of uh, old clay, you're going to wash it, you're going to mix it with water, you're going to strain it through uh, a uh, window screen, then you're going to let it sit, you're going to pour off the excess water. Now, a note there, remember, we're not making a clay body, we're making clay slip. And it's different than commercial slip, i can show you that in a minute. Uh, but uh, you um, definitely want to uh, pour off all the water you don't need but paying close attention to uh, the uh, the thickness of your slip and what you want to do with it. Uh, you can always add more water if you drain off too much. Uh, and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you pour the thick slip in and something messes up. It's just, it's just slip. It's not going to ruin your mold. Just let your mold dry out and uh, adjust your recipe and go on. Uh, if you want to add sodium silicate to this natural clay instead of water, you can do that. If you want to add some bentonite, which makes it, the clay a little more plastic, you can do that. But that's another video. We're not going there. We're just using natural clay out of the ground and water. So, you know, that's pretty much it. Now, on the molds, uh, you know, I make almost all my molds that I use in this. We're going to feature a couple of commercial molds. The first thing is the mold, the thicker, the better because what the mold is going to do is absorb the water out of the slip. You don't have anything else but water, so if you're going to solidify this slip, it's got to be absorbed somewhere. So I make these really, really thick. This one, actually these aren't thick enough, but they're, they're thicker than some I have. Uh, these were made to use commercial slip in. Uh, if you don't, if you have them too thin, they absorb uh, all the water they can absorb, the mold gets soggy, and it just quits. It takes a long time for it to get where to pop out of the mold. Uh, if you have a failure, bad crack, whatever, you don't like it, just throw the thing back, the, you know, the, the, the mud back in the, in the bucket, stir it back up. It ain't gonna hurt a thing. Uh, you can cast anything. You can, I do a lot of bowls, as you can see, a lot of different things, different kind of bowls, simple, very simple, little ones, big ones, whatever. As, you know, that's not a problem. You can do 2D stuff. And of course, we'll talk more about this later. This is what I consider a 2D mold. You know, it's just, you pour it in, the, in an open mold, watch it, and let it start to set up and then pop it out. And you can do 3D pieces. And we have some here in these molds. And we're fixing to get to that in a little bit. This is a 3D, okay? It's a 3D mold, and it's cast out of nothing but just regular old plain river clay. Uh, if you happen to break a piece while it's wet and pliable, as pliable as this stuff gets, you can reattach it. I reattached the head on this little rascal right here, this first one that I cast, and I picked it up like this out of the mold. Head popped off. So I did what all slip casters do. I took some wet clay out of the uh, bucket and a uh, paintbrush, painted both surfaces, stuck a head back on. Okay, works fine. That does work. Uh, and uh, you can um, um, cast things as thick as you want. 
by letting them stay in the mold longer. And of course, the, the thicker the uh, plaster is, the faster it becomes thick. Or you can cast them as thin as you want. You can make them just as thin as you want. Um, you know, once you've got one cast, uh, you know, it's greenware just like anything else. And it's very, very, very fragile. Uh, I do my designs, you know, that I put on these things. Uh, I do them while they're still, I can't use the word leather hard here because it's not like commercial clay. It, it does get leather hard, but there's a lot of grog in it, a lot of sand, a lot of silica, a lot of mica, and it, it, it's tough to work with. And if you're not careful, here's what happens. It is fragile. I had this bowl almost completely made. I was putting the little dots across it, and it broke, as did this one, same way. I had just got through. I was putting the little circles on it, and it broke. Okay, so it's fragile. Remember that. This stuff is fragile, but workable. Um, you know, if you are going to unmold really large pieces, like the... Uh, this piece right here, running out of room, this little piece, this piece right here. Uh, there's a little trick you can use that, that it, and this, all of the, uh, all of you people that have fooled with slip know this. Uh, get you some uh, glass pieces, make you some, uh, some glass pieces up here like this. Just run and slap completely out of room here, folks, and I'm terribly sorry. Uh, but you get some glass or you can get plaster bats. And what you do is you, you just put them over the mold, like this one right here, if you were gonna uncast it. I don't know that this is ready to come out, but we'll try, okay? We're gonna try. And I just put the glass over the top and just about broke my little fox. Uh, you know, in it like this, and just turn it upside down. And I tap it a few times, and if it's ready to come out, which that one's not, but anyway, you, you get the idea. You get the idea. So you use plaster or glass, and if you just turn it upside down on that, and after a while, it'll fall out on its own. Uh, and that keeps it round. If for some reason you make it where it's not round, you get it kind of cattywampus, get you a bowl or something like that, skeet it around in it, it'll make it round again, okay? Um, probably got off my script, but heck, I just, that just happened to, to come where it, where it came in. Um, this stuff holds up very well to sanding, and I'll sand the piece here before we quit and show you. I sand it after it's dry. When it's in this state right here, after I've done whatever designs I'm going to do on it, I do some rim sanding and some inside sanding because this stuff's kind of rough. It's got a lot of, like I said, silica and, and, and mica and stuff in it. And uh, then, you know, don't try to drill any holes. These things will require a hole eventually, okay? I generally drill a hole right up here to hang them on the wall. You can you can cast stuff in it if you want to, but I mean a wire, hot, a heat resistant wire. But I drill a hole. Okay, wait until you fire it. Don't try to drill a hole in greenware. I'm not telling you you can't do it, but don't. It's it's gonna it's gonna drill a lot better after it has been fired. Uh, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it on on this kind of stuff. We're going to unmold some of this stuff. And I'm going to show you some issues. Well, well, we'll go ahead and show you this issue right now. Uh, let's see if I can't get some of this stuff out of the way here. That's been um, kind of plaguing us throughout this. Now, um, as I said before, you know, you on your mold while I'm getting this stuff ready. If you if you make your mold, make it if you have the commercial molds like this, uh, you can't do anything about that. Unfortunately, you're going to have to dance with the one what brought you. But it works good. They're generally thick enough. They generally have enough mass to do whatever they have to do. Uh, you can also cast up these neat little things like this. It's something, a project I've got going for a friend. One's in reverse and one's in positive. Uh, but it works great. Even, the, even these things, when you fire them, they don't, they don't crack or bust. I have not lost a piece in firing. I have fired a ton of this stuff. Ten gallons, to be exact. And uh, so far, the only pieces I've lost is in the process. Now, here's one of the problems you're going to run into, especially on the very big pieces, is these cracks appear. Believe it or not, these cracks are not on the other side. They're right here because this here is drying faster 
than the bottom or vice versa. I don't know. Anyway, one side's drying faster than the other. It causes the, the uh, cracks. Here's what you do. Get yourself a paintbrush. Get your little stuff like that. And just dive it in there. Don't worry about the front yet. You got plenty of time to worry about the front. Just kind of keep an eye on this as it dries. And uh, you're going to flop this thing out on a piece of glass anyway. And if there's some bad places in the front, uh, it will, uh, you'll see them. And you fix them just like this. You just want to be a little bit more careful on that, on the uh, front. Because I'm just slopping it in here for the, actually for the mass. You know, and kind of work it down into the, into the cracks. If they reappear, slop some more in there. Keep an eye on it. Okay, that's how you will fix those. What, regardless of where the, the cracks are, that's how I fix them. On this, it works good. Probably couldn't get away with this on a, a regular uh, commercial slip, but don't know. I don't have any problems with that at all. Uh, so you got, we've got that. And um, let's see where else we're going to go on this here. Uh, I've got a couple of, actually three commercial molds that we're going to do. And uh, we'll see if we have success with those or not. Uh, once this stuff is fired, I fire it to cone 04, just like I would any, any bisqueware whatsoever. It's just all of it, 04, whether, regardless of the mass, regardless of what it is, it goes to 04. Now, a couple of interesting features about this stuff. Uh, even though this is fired and it will not dissolve, it's porous. It's very porous. You can see the water's just coming out all over. So I said, gee whiz, I mean, you know, what kind of a deal is that? So I just, I always try to double check everything against something else. So I got just a piece of regular slip cast that I made. It also wicks water. Not as bad as the stuff that you uh, are working with now, but it wicks water. Now, this is what's really interesting. Whoop, well, it did. This one here, uh, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it wicks it too, even through the glaze, but not much. And the reason for that is the bottom doesn't have anything, and this is thin. So, anyway, that's just something you need to know. Well, another little note before we get around to maybe messing some molds up. And what all is, is that this material takes a lot more glaze, where I usually use three coats. Uh, you're probably going to put, want to put more. You might even want to put the glaze on a little thinner, you know, water it down a little bit so it soaks in. You had a little issues right here on this. I featured this little piece in uh, another little mo uh, video, but uh, you can see. So it's not, you know, it's not a big deal. You'll, you'll learn that as you do it. I'm just trying to pass this stuff on to you uh, as, as it occurs. Uh, okay, let's see if we can unmold something. Normally these things like this, I unmold them just like this. Boom. You turn them over. That is it. They are out of the mold. If you get them thick enough, they don't deform. That's ready to sit aside and uh, dry. You know, it, it dries surprisingly fast. The little bitty ones are the same way. They come right on out. Boom. Just like that. And you be real careful with them because they will deform. And although it's not a big deal, if it deforms and you don't like it, then you can you can just throw it back in the mud bucket. This one may or it may not come out. This one is a little bit problematic because it is so thin, it soaks, it's wet. So I ah, how about that? Today it's going to come out. I'm in my shop, air conditioner's been going, got a lot of the humidity down, so a lot of this stuff's gonna make a liar out of me. But as you see, this stuff unmolds extremely well. Now this one always is problematic, and it's not going to come out, okay? It's problematic. It always has been. And it's a little thicker. I don't know why. It might be the mold design. Uh, oh, I know what this one is. I know what this one is. This one here is this. It's a salsa bowl. And I have to be careful with the salsa bowls. There's a little tiny crack in there. And every time I forget this rascal is the salsa bowl. And what happens... And you're not going to run across one of these because I've never seen the salsa bowl mold. I made this one. And uh, the little feces, wanna, they want to hang in there, okay? And when they pop out, there's going to be cracks around each and every one of them just about. 
where it's shrinking, it's pulling and in there holding, but it will come out and you just repair them. You just take your little paintbrush, your stuff, and you dab it around it. Hey, you're good to go. You're good to go. And they make great little salsa bowls. This is a plastic salsa bowl. I think it came from the dollar store, Dollar Tree. And I used it to make a mold. And we'll get around to making some molds one of these days in a video. And uh, then you can just make molds of everything you want. So most of this stuff here, except for the commercial molds, I made. Uh, little uh, uh, Willie here, my, my Buddha. Uh, he was a concrete mold. I got it from Ghost Statue. The whole design on this thing was a plastic mold to make plastic, I mean, uh, concrete and plaster casts. I filled the mold full of silicone to get this positive. And from the positive, I made uh, this swell plaster thing right here. There it is. Okay, so anyway, you see it. We won't spend a lot of time on it. Now, I'm telling you all that not to tell you what a great mold maker I am, but to tell you the problems that pop up. You unmold Willie too fast. You can see, let me be down here where I throw him on the floor. And I don't know if you can tell in this or not. He's got a lot of relief. His little belly comes up above his head and all that good stuff, okay? And he looks pretty good. Now, in this, everything began to pooch down. I unmolded it too early. And I plopped it down as I do most of my molds to get the rim nice and flat. Plopped it down. And as it sat there, gravity had its way with, with Willie. And I didn't catch it. Okay, now I tell you all of this to show you the cracks. You believe it or not, this thing did not bust in the firing. Never had one fail, cracks or whatever. He's not exactly perfect, but when I glaze him, he's gonna work out wonderful. And that's what you have to watch out for this and the little sun that I have, a little sun, uh, um, yeah, this thing. Don't even know where in the heck I am. But this one here is a little bit more structural than in a willy here because of its dome shaped. And as you all know with your geometry and all that, <clears throat> that works really good. Domes are better than flat. So that's all that. We'll put willy back on the floor. Won't matter. All right, let's get down to some, some really good stuff here. Uh, and then we're going to wrap this thing up because it's taking, like I said, longer than I want it to. Oh, real quick, real quick. When you pour your molds, of course, I strain everything through the strainer. I dip it out of the big five-gallon bucket in this. I strain it into this. Strain it. And then when you get through straining it, while you've, after you've poured everything in your molds, go ahead and wash this stuff real quick before it gets hard. Keep your stuff quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep your stuff clean and you won't have any problems with it trying to get the dried clay off of it. Okay, that is that is that right there. We've covered all this wonderful stuff right here. I got a couple of things I'm going to show you. First one we're going to show you is whether or not we can get this little deal right here out of this without breaking it. Normally, I'd wait a little bit longer, but it's almost lunchtime. And I'm just curious. I just let the last one, I unmolded too early. And like I told you, I broke, I broke his little head off. And I'm just wanting to see. So I don't know which side's the front, which side's the back on this. I don't guess it really makes a heck of a lot of difference. But I just pick it up. Ah, there he is. And uh, it, the mold came out perfect. You can see he, he, is, he is perfect. If I don't break him, he's just beautiful except where I kind of hit him. Because it's still messy wet. This is coming right on off. See how easy that was to break. There's no plasticity. Is that a word? Anyway, the clay's not plastic at all, hardly. It's, I mean, it's just clay. Now, this is where I broke him before. I stuck my finger way up in there, and I don't have real long fingers. Fingers. Uh, let's see what we can do here, folks. Let's go in there. Maybe. It's breaking again, so I'm gonna leave him. I'm gonna leave him. I'm gonna put a little. I'm gonna put a little bit of of uh, stuff on him. You just about can't get these out of the mold. What I would suggest, if you have some molds like this and you want to use them for this, it's doable. 
it is doable. You can sand all this stuff off here when you get through. I just put a whole lot of it on here and let it soak in and whatever. But anyway, you, 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 my point is made. It casts and they're adorable. I mean, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff. I got geckos and I got foxes and I got raccoons and I got all kinds of junk because that's just the way I am. I like that kind of stuff. Nobody else much likes it. Can't hardly give it away, but I got it. So this one right here is a vase. And this is what one side of it looks like. And I'm going to show you what I do. Now, this one I can tell which side's which. And I want the back side up. And I'll show you why. So you go to unmold it, and you pick it straight up so you don't mess it up or anything. And now, if you want to leave it as a vase, that's all you got to do. Is just leave it like this, let it, well, actually let it dry a little more in there, but when it's dry enough for you to take out completely out of the mold, then you, uh, you can unmold it, fire it, it's a vase. Now, here's what I want to do. I want a wall hanging. You can drill little holes on it or put your wire hanger in it while it's uh, greenware, and you make little wall hangings. I have no use for vases, but wall hangings I put everywhere. Now normally I take this knife and I cut right down the edge. It works super, super great. Somebody asked the other day that I use one of these. Well, I do at the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to see, we're just going to follow the contour of this thing all the way down. Boom. And pick that part. Eh, come on. No. There you go. That part ready to go in the mud with that. We're not going to take this one out because it will fall apart. But that's what you got. Okay? This is actually a bigger one than this one. But I have three sizes. But that's it. You you can do what you want to with it. Make a hanging. There you go. That's that side. It's that easy. That easy. That kind of tickled me when I learned to do that. Um, I was doing them in a totally different way before, and they were hard to do the way I was doing them. I was building dams and leveling in first one thing and another, and uh, it just didn't work real good. Now, this one right here was pretty much a failure last time. I poured two of them, and I poured them with some of that 50-50 slip that I was telling you about in one of the other videos, and one of them was a total failure. This little puppy right here come out about 90% good. His tail didn't make it on the bottom. It's fine. He'll get a home anyway. So now what we're going to do is I poured them again this time and I wiggled it around and, and, and shook the heck out of it and uh, you know did my dead level best to get this stuff down in all the crooks and the crevices. Now this again may be a failure because on my part because probably ought to let it sit a while, okay? But you get the idea. I mean, I don't have to explain this. You guys aren't, aren't youngins. You know what's going on. And that's gonna be the hardest part to get out, so we're gonna turn it down. That's the bottom. We're gonna see if she'll lift up, and we're gonna see what we got, okay? It, it pulled loose right here. See, it pulled loose. It, it, if I'd have let it sit longer, it'd have been okay. This is doable, but it's not. See, a little foot pulled loose because it was still wet. You know, these will go back in the mud bucket, uh, and I'll keep experimenting with this. But if I'd have let this thing sit, it probably would have developed a few cracks, like right here where it's pulling. But you can work around that if you wanted to. And... Uh, so I have a dragonfly, and I have some huge, larger gecko, one larger gecko, and I'll experiment with them. But as you see, you can, you can cast 3D, you can cast 2D, you know, all day long with this, with this cheap clay. I mean, nothing added, nothing. The whole point to this is nothing. No bentonite, no sodium silicate, no nothing. You can make all the bowls you want to make. You can put all the designs you want to put on them. And uh, you just have to remember a few things. And I hope that I covered most of them. Uh, as is always, 
you know, you, you, uh, you forget a few things. But anyway, folks, that's it. That's my video on advanced techniques for messing with this river mud. And uh, I took too long, but I showed you what I've done. And get out there and get you some creek mud, river mud, or whatever, and have at it. It's, 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 uh, it's fun. It's probably all going to fire red, but it don't matter. I'm Captain Mike, and this is my video, and I'm out of here.